this game is and how you play it. Are you ready for that? I am ready. Okay, so Dragon Bridge, Dragon Bridge is a two-player uh, uh, card game where you have this one by, I forget how many, it's like 18 or something or 19, I think, uh, grid. And your character is placed on the grid. You can see the little arrow that shows where you are on the grid at this point. Oh. And the game is all about bumping each other back and forth on the grid. There's a dragon at one end of the bridge. And the objective is to do one of two things. Either you want to uh, move to the side of the bridge that's opposite the dragon. So like escaping away from the dragon and play a uh, move card from one of these red tiles, these orange tiles, they're called exit tiles. Um, or, so that's the escape victory. And then there's also the like, uh, get the other player eaten by the dragon victory, which is uh, the other player can't get out of the threatened tiles. That's the tiles that are near the dragon, the red tiles near the dragon. Uh, by the end of their gem phase. So if they fail to get out of there by the end of their gem phase, they lose, you win. So there's the, those are the two victory conditions. One is you escape. The other is they get eaten by the dragon. So that's the so base. This kind of like push-pull, right? Like you want to stand in the middle to be safe from getting eaten, but you also want to get off the back end to escape? Well, when the dragon's over here, it's purely good for me to be moving this way, Right. Like to be be me moving uh in your case down, in my case up. Or sorry, in your case up, in my case down. Right? You're by the way, you're the ninja, Omar Evans, and I'm Bunny Wizard. Um and so for you, moving away from the dragon is always good. For me, moving away from the dragon is always good. Uh there's just two major complicating factors. One is just a question of like, well, is it better for me to move away from the dragon, or is it better for me to bump you into the dragon? So there's that. Yeah. But then much more complicating is the fact that the dragon can actually switch sides and will switch sides at, at sort of semi-predetermined points in the game. So obviously, and so that's why, yeah, being in the middle is very defense-y. Um, you know, uh, there's, we'll talk, we can talk about like the strategy triangle kind of stuff later on, but the, the but yeah, basically if you're in the middle, you can neither really, uh, you you can't, one of the victory conditions is not available to you, and one of the lost conditions like is not going to happen to you either. Right. So it's right. very safe. Um, okay. So basically, you have on the bottom left of your screen, you see these cards. Uh, this is your hand, and you get a bunch of there are there's a deck of these kind of cards. They're over on the far right of the screen, um, and there's actually only I want to say like eighteen of those or something like that, like a very small number. I guess we can count them right now. It's four plus four plus nine so um 17 that's a 17 card deck and uh they basically have like very simple actions on them like move this one is called checkmate it says move two and i can uh use a green gem which we'll talk about in a second to bump three afterwards uh this one's very simple it's a it's called hop i don't know if you're looking at the stream right now but uh you might be confused if if you're not but uh oh yeah i'm i got it open Okay, cool. Uh, so this one's hop. Uh, this one's move three. Uh, it just has little foot icons. That means move. Move means what it sounds like. You just move your character three spaces. Um, you can move your character up to three spaces for a move. Uh, bumps have to be filled as far as you can. So if it says bump three, you have to bump them three. Uh, some other cards say some special stuff on them. They all have their own little things. You basically do what the card says. Kind of simple in that regard. Uh, but then what you do is you take that card and you put it over onto the far right of the screen. I think it might be on the left for you. Um, I'm not sure. I forget how that works. But it's the part, uh, it's the part, not this part, <laughs> but uh, the part over here with the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That that's where your cards go after you play them and on the bottom of each card you see a couple little wings like one two there's zero to three wings on the bottom of each card and those wings are what make the dragon fly or not so you can see in the top right corner uh this is my first time explaining the rules in this app so it's a little bit like it's a little bit sure. trickier than usual i'm usually used to doing it in 
tabletop simulator or real life. So on the top right corner, you have your phases. You have the action phase. That's where you play a card from your hand. You have your gem phase, which we'll talk about in a second. You have your then the dragon check, and that's what I was just talking about. Every time you play a card, it goes into this this pile here over this like queue, this list of cards, and adds more wings to the uh, to the number of wings. And then once there's seven cards there, uh, like basically, if there's either seven cards or nine or more wings, something happens and this whole system resets. This the uh, the dragon check system. There's two things that can happen. One is if uh, the the wings fill up. So if you get nine or more wings on cards that are there, the dragon switches sides. That's called a flight. And when that happens, these cards all go away and uh, we start it all over again. So you have this window early on where um, there's only one or two cards in the nest. This thing over here is called the nest. In the tabletop version, it looks a little bit more like a nest. Um, and uh, you have this period early on where you're safe. You know the dragon isn't going to switch for a while. But then it, towards it gets to the, toward the end, um, you start thinking more about, you know, how many... If I, I want to play this card, but that's going to put two cards into the... Two wings into the nest. So maybe I'll play this card because it only puts one because I don't really want it to switch sides. That kind of stuff. So there's a lot of, like, you're thinking about... You're weighing a lot of those things against each other simultaneously. And then if the uh, if there's seven cards there and there aren't nine wings, then it's called a roost. The dragon stays where it is, and you just like basically start over again. Uh, a few things happen on roost. Some characters have abilities that trigger on roost, things like that. Uh, so there's a couple other uh, little uh, things. So yeah, so that's uh, the dragon check. Is that's how that's how the dragon switches. Like players are controlling it, but indirectly by basically putting down these wings. Okay, and then uh, we got uh, the gem phase. At the end of your action phase, you can do one of a few things with green gems. Uh, one of them is you can just play a green gem. You can flip it to its other side. Um, I can't show you right now, but these the, the bright green gem is, uh, what's it called? Is like dark on the other side, and so it basically just flips, and that means it's like depleted. So you have one to three or the zero to three of these gems and you can just play them to move two tiles. It says teleport to. Teleport is a kind of movement. It's just like movement in every way except for one thing, which is it, you can't win the game with a teleport. Because if you remember, I mentioned in the beginning, one of the victory conditions is you get to the exit tile, one of the exit tiles, and you play a move card. So you have to play a legit move card. You can't play a teleport. You can't play a green gem and win with that. So that's just a minor difference between teleport and move. Uh, so that's one of the things you can do with green gems. Uh, some abilities and stuff will say, like this card here is called checkmate and it lets you move too. And it says you can flip a green gem or, ex you know, just like, uh, what do they call it? Um, deplete a green gem to bump three as well if you want. So there's things like that. But the basic things you can do with green gems are spend it, at any time to move to, to teleport to. Or if you're on a green gem tile, you see on the board there's the four green gem tiles, you can f uh, gain a green gem. Um, and the third thing is if you have three gems during the gem phase, you can play your gem action to buy one of these cards, these uh, items over here. On the left side of my screen, I think the right side of Ryan's, uh, it's there are these items, they're randomly, you know, gener generated or drawn out, and they're permanent upgrades most of the time, uh, or at least semi-permanent upgrades that just make you stronger in some way, and you just have that forever. So that's kind of the econ track, is getting items. Um, now, this digital version, that's pretty much it for the base rules of the game. You also have a character that has special powers and uh, passive abilities and whatever. Uh, actually, Ryan, your character is a little bit weird in that you actually only have two green gems. Most characters have three. So I wouldn't recommend this necessarily as your first character to play, but um, uh, it's, you know, it's fine. It's just a little bit weird. Um, and the other thing I would uh, just say is, oh, and at the end of your turn, you draw. You draw up to four. So you always, you pretty much always have four cards in your hand. Um, and then that's pretty much it for the base game of Gem Wizards. Now, the problem is that this app only has 
the base game plus the uh the uh bridge hacking expansion so that's these cards the black the dark cards on the far side of the screen um and but honestly the game is better with them um anyway so like it's fine the way this works is every time you bump someone you gain a white gem which is basically just like an integer there's a supply of them there's eight of them and you gain them and then basically all it means is you can spend on your gem action you can do a gem action can be buying or you know using one of these abilities for that many white gems so it's just like what it's very rare you end up playing maybe one of these per match uh but it can slightly change the strategy a little bit to know that some of these are in the game and that's pretty much it i mean the cool thing about this app is that it is rules enforced so you will like it'll give you prompts for everything it'll really be like walking you through like what your possible things you can do are and uh we should probably just play a match or two just to kind of like you know get the feel for the flow of it and i think it'll come together pretty simply uh do you have any qu questions ryan yeah i guess so to the exit tiles are these the ones with the checkered stripes on them as well yes those are both the exit or the threatened tiles depending on which side okay, the dragon right. is on okay and then 